Hey everyone, welcome back to Breaking News for Intercession. I was sent this clip of Pastor Henderson silencing a disruptive spirit for what he perceived within his service. And someone asked me, how do I feel about it? So before I share my comments or thoughts, let's take a look at it. So we'll be right back. that I would like to share is we have to look at our pastors as a whole, which means there are so many different people, situations, circumstances that is gathered together in one place. We only see from a bird's eye perspective. So we only see the the whole picture. God allows the pastor when he's standing in front of the congregation to have a detailed view. So he's picking up on the, the babes in Christ, the novice. He's picking up on the seasoned ones in Christ. He's picking up on those who came to find fault. He's picking up on those who really is pulling on him because they need a word. All of this is going on while the pastor or the man of God, woman of God that's set to bring the message is going on while they're still deciphering, hearing from the Lord to give the message, to give the word. So as they're ministering, they're also interceding. All of this is going on. All of this is going on. Now, to reference back to Pastor Keon, he explained what happened. He said some things he allowed, he don't say nothing, he allowed to go on. He said, but when God tell him to stop it, he has to stop it. Now, I said this on this channel before, and I will say it again. If someone ever says, God told me to do this, God told me to say this, I'm not going to contradict it. Because that's between you and God. My role as an intercessor is to keep you in prayer. Would I have done anything differently? I'm not the pastor. I wasn't in that moment. So what I'm about to say is what some people call the um, Monday morning quarterbacks. <laughs> Maybe one of the ushers. Like I didn't watch the whole service. So I don't know how long this young lady was screaming out. So maybe one of the ushers, elder, and intercessors could have taken her out and, and, and calmed her spirit. You know, dealt with what, whatever needed to be dealt with within that moment. Um, I have been in a service years ago where someone was screaming out and um, I had place my hand on their back and was just telling them to, you know, speak in peace to their spirit because you don't know what that person is going through. Now, like I said, the pastor or the man or woman of God that's set for that time, their discernment is heightened. So they recognize what's going on in that spirit because you have to know that if it is a demonic spirit, then of course you got to rebuke, cast out. If that's a mental disorder, you still address it, you still deal with it, but you have to, you deal with it more so in a, a deliverance, a healing deliverance type. Or is someone on the verge of a breakthrough and they got to scream this thing out like a mom giving birth. They got to push it out. They got to scream it out. With that being said, 
I do trust the ministry of Pastor Keon. So if he heard God says, stop that, stop that, 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 that voice, because the, the only voice needed to be heard in that moment is the voice of the Holy Spirit, and that did not reflect the voice of the Holy Spirit, then I'm going to um, pray with him and support what he said God gave him. All of us have our own interpretation of what could happen could have happened. Like I said, Monday morning quarterback. When you watch the football game, the next day you at work, all he had to do was throw this person. He could have did a Hail Mary. They could have blitzed. They could have did this. Everybody have their thinking caps on following the game of what the coach had to think within the game. So you just, you don't know. So we're about to pray for not only Pastor Keon, but all pastors, and you, you, you know, if you've been following following me long enough, you know that's my heartbeat to keep our leaders, those on the front line, to keep them in prayer. So let's go to God in prayer. Hallelujah, Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up your beautiful, precious name, Lord Jesus. It is at your name that every knee shall bow, every tongue should confess that you are Lord. You hung on the cross. You died. You went into hell and took the keys back from death and hell and told Satan he has no power. You rose again on the third day with all power in your hand. You are mighty. You are majestic. You are wonderful. There is no one that can compare. Who would dare to compare the earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof, the world and all they that dwell therein. You are God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, I pray for Pastor Keon. Father, I pray for his heightened discernment. I pray for his quick obedience. Father, he th said that he heard you say, stop it. So Lord, we pray and lift him up for those who don't understand. Long as he know he heard from you, Father, I pray, Lord God, that you bless his ears, grace him to always be able to hear your voice clearly and distinctively. Father, I thank you that you said my sheep knows my voice and the strangers they will not follow. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you keep Pastor Keith on. Keep them in a space of consecration. Father, I pray that there will be no backlash to this that will trouble his spirit. Father, I pray and declare and decree that as you grow the church, you're growing him. As you grow him, you're growing the church. Father, you said in your word that you will add to the church daily such as should be saved. Send him, oh God, those that are called to hold his hand up in the name of Jesus. Bless our pastors. Bless our leaders. Let not none get puffed up in pride. But Father, we cover them. We cover them in the name of Jesus. That they find rest. They find self-care. They have a support system. That when they need validation, you validate them. Father, their decisions for their destiny. They're not only their destiny, but the destiny of the church. Never let that be a weight that weighs them down. You said lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and let us run this race with patience. Father, I pray you bless our leaders as they run this race. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus. My encouragement for you is lift up your pastors. Lift up the leaders. Lift up those. And try not to look at them through critical eyes. If you feel they have made a mistake, if you feel as if they had sidestepped, if you feel that they are misstepping, then pray for them. Pray for them. All intercessors, you should be getting up at least a half hour before every service and praying for the word of God to come through. Praying for the service, declaring and decreeing 
There will be no disruption, no distraction, no interruption, and no interference, and no interception. The word of God will go forth. The glory of God will rest on this service. Lives will be changed. Souls will be delivered. Souls will be saved. Hearts will be healed. Spirits, wounded spirits will be mended and our man of God, our woman of God will have a refill, a refuel, a refreshing after they pour out the word of God. These are the type of prayers that we pray over our leaders. They are not perfect and we're not looking for perfection. We're looking for them to be in sequence, in syncopated and in time step with the Holy Spirit. So whatever the Holy Spirit has assigned for that service, we declare and decree our man and woman of God will be able to flow freely, freely in the name of Jesus. Yes, they're going to make mistakes. Yes, they're going to do something we don't agree with. What God give them, he doesn't give, he give it to us in sound bites. So if you don't trust your man and woman of God, if you feel like they are always doing that, then you need to ask God, where should I be? Because where I am right now, I don't feel my soul is called to this brook. After you pray, God will, he will release his answers. You're not leaving because they won't let you leave the song in the choir or make the announcements. You're leaving because your soul is not being fed. DM me, whatever your prayer request may be. And if you would like for me to come and serve in, at your church in prayer, DM me as well. Thank God for you. Looking forward to seeing you in the next video.